Okay, I'm going to show you today how to put a solder on PL259 connector on LMR400. Um, I got some Wilson, I got a good deal on it, um, but this one came with some N-type male connectors on it. Um, don't need these, I could run adapters over to the uh, PL259s, but I'd rather just cut it off and put new ones on. So um, first thing you do is, is make sure you take your, your connector apart here. You're going to want to take this end. It can only screw on one way. So unscrew that, and it's going to sit on the cable like this. So um, we need to make sure that we slide that guy down the cable. And then I also do um, heat shrink tubing uh, as well on all these connections. Um, I like the stuff that has the glue on the inside, create a weather, weather tight seal on it. So, uh, slide that down too. Make sure you do that. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is kind of lay out your connector and the, uh, middle conductor there is going to come up through here. So lengthwise, we just want to see, we want it a little bit longer. We can cut the tip off once we get it in. But what we're going to do here is we're going to want to cut this back. Again, we want a little sticking out from where that is. And the first thing we're going to do is expose the, um, the outer shielding so that we can do the ground on this cable to the ground of this. So right where these threads are right here is where it threads into. So we're going to cut right about here. I just use a razor blade. And I just cut through real soft. You can feel once you get through the plastic and you start to hit the braid underneath it. You don't have to go hard, um, but this is how I do it. Um, and the idea here too is you don't want to go through the braid on the other side. And you can feel it. And then pull that off and then you've got your grounded shielding here and again it's going to sit about like that inside the connector um, I like to go ahead and tin that up on the outside here I'll go ahead and turn the solder and iron on and I just use rosin core solder um, a little quicker a little easier And what we're going to want to do is tin the area here in this section of the connector where this would lie. So, you know, we want to go about a quarter inch up on the connector here. And let's go ahead and clamp it. And don't want to put too much heat into it. You don't want to um, damage the insulator between the outer shielding and the, uh, the inner. And once I do a little section, I cool it off then. I use isopropyl, isopropyl, I use alcohol. Okay. The hard part's going to be twisting all this around. too far up on it either. Let's 
So now if we look at our connector here, you can see we've got a solder solder base down right here, which is going to be where we're going to solder here in the middle. And so now what we need to do is right here, right where this ends, right about here, we need to cut through the outer shielding and through the insulator, but not through the center conductor. Um, this is a little bit harder. Um, again, I just use a razor blade, go by feel. And right now I'm going through the solder, I can feel. It's a little harder to get through the solder. with that right there so I always make sure that these edges on the outer outer coax are, are make sure they're kind of pushed down there you don't want them kind of sticking up it's threaded here on the inside so this goes on make sure before you do this too if you're going to use heat shrink tubing make sure you've got that on your coax but you have to have this end of the connector already on the coax. So we're going to take and put this guy in here and make sure your center conductor gets inside the connector there. You'll feel it. And you start it on by hand. It does not take too long and the tension starts to get tight. Yeah, we're about done there. All right, so now I just got a couple quick solders to go here. Um, being that we've already tinned underneath, it should be touching. It was you could feel it kind of grinding as it as it went on there, but uh, right here in this hole. We're going to want to throw down just a little bit of solder. We don't need a whole lot. And so I usually hold it there for just a second. And then I add just a little and I throw it back out. And again here, we don't want to heat too much because we don't want to mess up the uh, insulation. And so then you've got all of those covered. Last thing we've got to do then is just solder up our center conductor. And again, you this is it's got to be careful with heat on this one too. Okay. I like to keep it up a little bit, let gravity help out. key here too is you don't want any big blobs or anything like that on the outside here. I usually take the iron while it's hot, just kind of slide up a little, making sure there's nothing catching. I could feel them there, there's still one there. And I usually use wire cutters like this, and I'm just using one edge of the blade here. I'm just coming up to make sure there's no no high spots really catching. There was that one that I was feeling. Now we're good. And I usually it's not much on these, but I usually cut right at the tip there. 
if it's hanging out. Usually I've got more out than this. All right. Now we slide our heat shrink up. Okay, and then once you're all done, it's going to take the your end piece that was on there, screw it on, and then you're ready to go. Just connect your uh, good to go. All right, uh, if you want to test the cable. Once you're finished, it's your multimeter. Put it in ohm mode. I like to make it where it beeps, and that way you know when you have continuity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this guy on just the center conductor here. And I still have the, uh, the old end type on the other end of this cable here. And you want to touch middle to middle, and you want to get a zero reading there. So um, then we'll clamp onto the outer shield here, and then we'll clamp onto the uh, inner shield here. But yeah, same thing here. We uh, and what you also want to check is go to your center conductor here and your outer conductor here. And you want to make sure that you don't have a connection. And so you want to see out of loop. And that's how you can test it. Just make sure that uh, with a multimeter that you don't have a short in your cable.